Good morning. I hope you're all uh, all prepared for the cooler weather on the way. Uh, come fall. <laughs> uh, we do have an announcement. And Donna? All right, Gabby with the girls. Is that happening already? We always, but this is an organized Gab. Oh, I see, organized Gab, okay. Mickey. Yeah, don't go by the numbers up there. It, uh, uh, don't go by the numbers, check in Leviticus instead. Uh, okay. Uh, the other announcement I have is I, I, I heard a rumor. It doesn't involve anyone here, but I heard a rumor of a couple um, off someplace in New Jersey um, who are celebrating 60 years of marriage this week. I know one is Betty. I don't remember the other one's name. Um, but uh, Betty, yeah, Betty and Klaus are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary this week. Um, uh, poor Betty, I don't know. She's a strong woman, let me tell you. But a happy anniversary, because they'll probably watch this and wonder who told him. Well, a little bird. So, um, watching any of the Olympics? You know? It, um, so uh, the question I have for you is, what's the difference between a wood tick and the Eiffel Tower? Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's a trick question, okay? Because there is no difference. A wood tick and the Eiffel Tower are both, ready? Parasites. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you know. Um, and some of you might remember the 60s. Well, you probably lived through it, but do you remember it? Um, and hippies. Uh, remember what do you, you called the, the wife of a hippie? No. Mrs. Hippie. Uh, okay, that's, well, you know, you gotta stretch these things. Um, and I was told I was told that the word icy was easy to spell. And I thought, what? So I looked it up. And looking it up, now I see why. Uh, bad. Okay. Um, usually in the late afternoon, our backyard is filled with birds. Oh yeah, they're just all over the place. So do you know what? What birds stick together? Velcros. Yeah, I know. Okay. Well, today we begin our journey into John chapter 6. And for the next few weeks, we will, our gospel lesson will come from John chapter 6. And we begin with the feeding of the 5,000 um, uh, this morning. And so my question when it comes to, to bread is, when does bread rise? When does bread rise? When you yeast expect it. Okay, you know, you know and in bakeries, you know, if you've been into any of the bakeries um, uh, in Cloudcroft or any place, um, you know, they're now serving drinks. And you know what the most popular drink is in a bakery? This is bad. Baking soda. Yeah. See, uh, bad, okay. Well, how about um, this one you can get in a second. What do you call a fish with two knees? Two, 
Toony fish. Yeah, that's right. See, I told you you would figure that one out. You know? And um, other kind of fish, big fish, whales. Um, do you know where um, you whale, uh, where you weigh whales? Huh? At the whaleway station, yeah, yeah, at the whaleway, yeah, yeah. You just have to kind of mess up your mouth there. Um, uh, it gets worse. Anyway, um, we begin our journey into John chapter 6 and a very familiar story of the feeding of the 5,000. Listen as the gospel lesson is read. And I want to suggest to you to listen with different ears because, spoiler alert, it has little to do with feeding hungry people. It has little to do with bread, feeding people who are hungry. Listen as John tells a story and see if you can hear that. So, please join me if you will in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there's enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for the life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our gathering hymn is hymn number 482. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Please join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading is from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing food from the first fruits to Elisha, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall, have, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 145, verses 10 through 18. Please read responsibly. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your Jesus and speak of your power. That all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are near to all who call upon you and to all who call upon you faithfully. Second reading is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with the power with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love i pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel from John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not be buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. And one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from all the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who was coming to the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into the boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. Now it was dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing, and when they rode about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But Jesus said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Familiar story. We know it very well, sometimes, or we think. Spoiler alert, though, it really has little to do with feeding people. Yes, it's there. And I got to tell you, for the next four weeks, you're going to hear the themes of Jesus being the bread of life. But here, in the beginning chapter, uh, of chapter 6 of John's Gospel, it sets the scene. And if it's not about bread and feeding people who are hungry, what is it about? Well, here John is setting up the whole scenario. And he wants his readers and us hearing this, he wants us to ask the question, who is Jesus? It's really not about the signs or the miracle that he's doing. It's about who is Jesus. And John, in his gospel, uh, gives us an opinion from a crowd of people and from the disciples themselves. But there are some interesting things happening in our text, which John puts in there to help tell the story of who Jesus is. The first thing is, right away, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. You know what the other side means? We may not know the Sea of Galilee, but we know the tracks. We know the what, other side of whatever uh, in various communities. It's where the Gentiles live, you know, those people. Well, Jesus goes to the other side. And unfortunately, some other people follow as well. So he's in Gentile territory. And then to notice, John says, now the Passover was near. What? I mean, what has that got to do with anything? Well, John wants us to bring to mind the Passover and what Jesus did at the Passover in the Last Supper. Uh, he wants us 
to think about the, the Eucharist of Holy Communion, that there isn't a direct connection here, but there is a connection. And so John wants us to have that in the back of our mind uh, to expect that, to make that connection with what Jesus does in that Last Supper. And then the question that he poses to Philip as he sees this large crowd coming toward where he was, he turns to Philip and says, from where are we to buy bread to feed all these people? Now, I'll save you a lot of time. The phrase from where is an interesting study in the Gospel of John, um, but we won't go into that now. But he says, from where are we to buy bread to feed all these people? And then John tips us off. It's a setup. It's a rhetorical question. Jesus knew what he was going to do. So why is he setting Philip up with this question? He's a rabbi. He's a teacher. And one of the things he has always done is to engage people in the whole process. Whole process of ministry, a whole process of thinking about what God is calling us to be about. And so Philip looks at the crowd and says, well, you know, six months' wages wouldn't buy enough food to, to give them just each a little piece. And then I don't know if this is supposed to be sarcastic. I, I really don't know. I, I go back and forth over the years. Andrew comes up and says, hey, there's a boy here with five loaves and two fish. Now, is he trying to be a smart aleck? And see how ridiculous it is Jesus is going to feed all these people and say, well, you know, look at this. Well, whatever the whole rationale is on Andrew's part, Jesus takes him seriously. And we know what happens. He blesses the stuff and he distributes to those who are seated. And 5,000 are fed and at the end there are 12 baskets of leftovers. Whoa. Okay, so far it's all about bread, right, and fish. But here it comes. And how do the people respond to this sign, this miracle? Ah, they say, this is a prophet who has come into the world. They recognize that Jesus is not just another man. There's something very special about him. Perhaps a prophet who has come into the world. Now, they want to make him king. Well, no selfish motive there. If he were king, he could supply bread all the time like that. Um, but Jesus sneaks away, goes back up into the mountain. Well, night comes, and the disciples say, you know, we got to get home. And so they head off into the boat. Jesus isn't with them. Now, I don't know if they thought he walked um, to where they're going or just what in the world is going on, but they take off without him. And we know what happens. A storm comes up, a, a strong wind, and the, and the water gets rough, and they're far from, from, from the shore. And lo and behold, Jesus comes walking toward them. Now, in John's gospel, they recognize it's Jesus. And then he says, and they were terrified. Why? Perhaps, and again, we don't know. Perhaps it was because the seas are rough and it's dangerous to be walking on the water in rough seas. I mean, Jesus was in danger, I guess. Um, and they were terrified. But Jesus says, don't be afraid. And then he utters those words, ego a me. No, it doesn't mean let go of my ego. That's a modern version of that. Ego on me, it means I am. We translate it, it is I. It can also be translated I am. And if you weren't convinced that this has little to do with the, the miracle or the sign that Jesus did, John wants to underscore it. Here's Jesus describing who he is. I am. It's the same response that Moses got from God in the burning bush. When Moses said, 
what is your name? And God responds, I am. It is I. Jesus wants his disciples to make that connection, that he's more than just a man. He is the Son of God. He comes from God. And that's what John's whole point. And who do the disciples think Jesus is? Is a man who comes to them in the midst of their fears and puts them at ease. But the story doesn't end because the disciples know better. They know how to save Jesus from uh, the, the terrible rough water and they want to get him into the boat. But notice right at the end of our text, they want to get him into the boat because they know better and immediately they come to the shore and Jesus never got on the boat. And I think John is trying to say, the disciples think they know better, but Jesus knows more. Interesting story. But in this story, John is trying to show us who Jesus is. He is someone who comes from God, who does the will of God, who points in all directions to God. Much like our first lesson uh, with Elisha. Now, we just have a, a little short, short text here about Elisha and his feeding of 100 people uh, with 20 loaves of barley and, if he didn't catch it, some ears of corn. Got right from Nebraska. You know, and, uh, <clears throat> but Elisha has done a number of miracles just prior to this. And all of those attempts are not about him. He is simply trying to point people towards the God who called them to be a prophet, to proclaim his will to the people. And here, he does the same thing. Because when he tells his servant, um, give these um, 20 loaves and, and this corn to the 100 people here to, to eat, and he gets a little pushback and says, wait a minute, this ain't enough food for all these people. And he says, give it to them to eat because the Lord has promised they will eat and have some left. Elisha, in this miracle as well, points the direction to a work of God, not a work of Elisha, not a work of the prophet, but of God. And that's what our lessons remind us of. Even in our second lesson in the letter to the Ephesians, we are reminded that in Christ, we are being rooted and grounded in love. Rooted and grounded in love to be able to share, to be able to point other people in the direction of God and God's compassion and love. And so, as he goes on to say, we're able to accomplish more than we ever imagined uh, we could ever do because of the love of God that is within us and grounded inside of us. Our lessons this morning remind us who Jesus is. He's more than just a miracle worker. In fact, in John's gospel, if you noticed, the people were following Jesus because of the signs that he did. John doesn't even call them miracles. He calls them signs, and that's an important distinction for us. I'm sure you're all familiar with signs. And whether you're driving or walking and you come to the, to the end of a, or an intersection and there's this big red sign that says stop, you get out with your little squee you know, bottle of water and, and wipe it off and, and, and worship that sign because that's what it's about, isn't it? No. Signs are not to be worshiped. Signs are not to be focused on. They point us to something else. They point us in another direction. They point us beyond themselves. And so the miracles of Jesus, John refers to as signs because they aren't about focusing on the miracle. We'll do that for the next four weeks. Um, but right now, it's pointing us in the direction of who this Jesus is. Now, it's easy to misunderstand signs. I've misunderstood a few in my life. I once went into the high school office and I tell you the truth, I don't remember why <laughs> because of what happened. 
But I walked into the office, and the principal was my neighbor, and I could see him in his office, his, in his office walking around. And as the conversation comes, uh, continues in the office, he gets closer to the door to overhear what's going on. Because <laughs> I walked into the church office, and my neighbor, another neighbor, is behind the counter. And she said, oh, how can I help you? And I said, I want a pack of Marlboro cigarettes. She said, what? I said, well, if you have the hard pack, I prefer the hard pack, but the soft pack is okay. And, uh, well, what? and she said, well, what do you, I said, well, if, if you don't have Marlboro, I, any brand will do, that's fine. She said, what are you talking about? I said, hey, lady, don't ask me. But as I walked into the school, I saw the sign right there. It said, tobacco-free school. I'm here for my free tobacco. Sometimes we misunderstand simple signs as the people misunderstood the signs that Jesus did that pointed to themselves and their own needs. But Jesus is there to point us in the direction of other people, to point us in the direction of acting out on our love. Our lessons this morning remind us of just who Jesus is. And as we come to our Lord's table this morning, again, in another meal with simple bread and wine, we are reminded of God's call to us to share the bread that he has given, to share the love that he has loved us with, and to reach out to all people so that all may know God's love and grace for them. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. one in the communion of, communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of generations, you work in us far more than we can ask or imagine. 
Bless the church you have called into being across time and space and fill it with the power of the Spirit for loving service. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation. Protect harvests and give every person food in due season. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God beyond borders, you rule in all. Bless the work of humanitarians and peacekeepers. Shield those who live, work, and serve in harm's way and bring an end to war and conflict. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfied the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or, or suffering, families in our community who endear hunger, and those who seek asylum or citizenship, and our beloved for whom death is near. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, you root us and ground us in love. As you inspired our ancestors in this place, in their ministry, sustain us also in new endeavors, that your glory may be made known in your loving kindness shared anew. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, your love in Christ surpasses all knowledge. We give thanks for the departed who have come to know the fullness of your grace. Join our voices in theirs and with the musicians Johann Sebastian Bach, Henrik Schultz, and George Frederick Handel, and all the saints singing your praises in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please share a sign of that peace with those around you. God's peace, Paul. God's peace to him. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Here it comes. Perfectly folded and creased to perfection. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, come for all is ready.
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood remain with us as we seek to take the message of love and grace into the world. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ.